today uh, I'm going to continue uh, the essential for practicing calming and insight. Sorry about the late. Uh, we have some technical issue here as usual. So we have to stay calm <laughs> to take care of the problem. <laughs> All right. So last week uh, we, uh, I, I give a brief intro to this uh, book and uh, the author, and also talk about the prerequisite and condition uh, for all the practitioners. And today I'm going to talk about chapter two and three, uh, condemn desire and eliminate hindrance. These two chapters, uh, the condemn desires, uh, desires is basically uh, teach us how to overcome our first to fifth organs uh, when contact with the objects. And there are many, we have different reactions for different people. Stop. How? Oh, okay. Okay, so the chapter two uh, is to teach all the practitioners how to um, manage their reactions when our first five organs interact with the objects. And if we didn't, we, we do not manage well, then it will become a problem for us to really get into uh, practice. And the chapter three is eliminate hindrance. Basically, uh, teach us how to uh, take care of our six consciousness. So when the mind uh, interact with its objects from outside or from inside, mainly from inside, that how, how we can take care of the reactions of if we didn't take care uh, in a proper way, then it will become a real hindrance for all the practitioners. So these chapters are really very important. And most of the time, um, we can see practitioners in the retreat uh, struggle with these 10, ten uh, things. Um, so, um, Master Zhiyi actually suggests that we should learn how to manage these 10 items in our daily life before we uh, participate the intensive retreats. Otherwise, we will waste our time uh, just dealing with these issues. Okay. So, um, how important this uh, should be take, why these 10 items should be taken care of uh, from the treatise on the great perfections of wisdoms. That is um, Mahayana Prajna Paramita uh, Padesa. That there is a Q&A. So the disciple asked Buddha, what are the exped expedient means for achieving Dhyana Paramita? So Buddha answered, you know, first, we need to detach from the five sensual objects and eliminate the five hindrance and implement the five dharmas. And the five dharmas, we will talk about it uh, next week. So as you can see, if we want to practice dhyana and achieve the dhyana paramita, these five plus five things that we need to overcome. And so the first, the first five, okay, the condemned desire. Basically, we have to overcome um, our um, attachment from the five sensory system, which are eyes, uh, contact with forms, ears, contact with sounds, nose with smells, tongue, the taste, and body, the tactile. And these five, uh, are the, these five organs are our uh, sensory um, 
to interact with this environment. And that's how we perceive the outside environment. So this is, um, it's very Im important to observe our daily pattern, our habitual pattern in a daily life, how we operate our five organs, how we interact with the environment. And of course, among those desires uh, from the five organs, um, the sexual desires is the most difficult one according to uh, Buddha's teaching. Uh, so Buddha's always taught Told us, told us that you know we have to overcome the craving for love, the the craving for uh, the sexual um, uh, desire. That you you if we, if we are over uh, um, attached to this, it will become a problem for the practitioners. And so, uh, iconic the story uh, is from the Sarangama Sutra, and and that's also the reason why why we have the Sarangama Sutra right now. So the Sutra start with a story that Ananda, okay, the, the most handsome monk uh, in the Sangha at that time. So he is very popular um, uh, for the woman. Um, so one, time, one day um, Ananda um, go to the village, beg for the alms, and then he passed a house and he was seen by a woman, a young woman called pra, Prakriti, okay, modern, modern Chenyu, okay. So this young woman immediately fell in love with Ananda once she saw Ananda. So, then she asks Ananda to marry with her, with marry her. And then Ananda say, you know, I'm a monk, I cannot get married. So this young woman uh, did not give up easy. Um, he, she went to her mother who is very good at voodoo. Okay, she begged to her mother saying that I got to, I, I want to, I must marry Ananda. Otherwise I would rather go to go die, I'd rather die. So her mother, even though that she know the monk uh, cannot get married, she's, she was still helping her daughter. So she set up a voodoo and, um, and then, then Ananda almost, almost break the precept, the fundamental precept at this right moment, uh, Buddha know about what was happening. And so Buddha sent Manjusri to rescue Ananda with Srangama Mantra. Okay, that's the first part of the story. So Ananda was brought back by Manjusri back to uh, Buddha. And then she, Ananda was so shameful and then that's why she asked for teaching. You know, uh, she, told, she told Buddha, I can memorize all your teachings. I practice dhyana. I do all the, the method that Buddha, you taught me. And yet I cannot overcome this, this scenario. I'm so powerless. And can you teach me a more deeper uh, practice. Uh, that's why Buddha start to um, uh, talk about Sarangama Sutra. Okay, so let's leave this aside. Let's get back to the young woman Prakriti. Prakriti still not giving up. Okay, she then followed Ananda everywhere after after that. She followed Ananda to every place. And Ananda was feel very, very uh, helpless that she cannot stop this woman following him. And so Buddha asked, uh, uh, invited the Prakriti to come and then ask, you know, why 
uh, one of the version is that Buddha asked Prakruti, why, why you love Ananda? What you love him about? And the Prakuti just say, you know, I love, I love his eyes, I love his nose, I love his mouth, and I love uh, his out appearance. I love uh, the way he walk, and I love his everything. And so, would I just reply? Do you know, Ananda's his eyes discharge eye bo boogers. Do you know his ear is coated with ear wax? Do you know his mouth secretes saliva? Do you know his nose is filled with snot? And his body carries urine and stools? And if you get married and you will have children, and then they might die, and that you will suffer from the die, the death of your children, and all the body eventually become a pile of bones. At this moment, uh, of course, Prakuti is actually have the very virtuous root. Upon hearing that, he, uh, according to the sutra, he attained the third fruition. Okay, very high level of uh, next step is to our hardship. Okay, so then, then uh, the. Prakriti realized that, you know, what she fell in love with is a pile of bones eventually. So uh, she ended up left home and, and later on attend our hardship. So here is a typical teaching of the so-called contemplation of impurity of the body. Okay, so that's uh, also a, a, a a very uh, key and important uh, practice uh, for us to overcome our desire. No matter is um, is we attach to our own body or we attach to other people's body. That we we love our body so much as well. You know, we take care of this. We need to you know do makeup. We uh, you know we we want to have a, a good uh, looking and we. We want to eat good food and good clothes and good of the everything to satisfy our five organs because we need to uh, feel good. Okay. So, but when we have this desire, we all have. Okay. When we have desire, uh, Buddha taught us the contemplation of the impurity is to try to release, release the desire, desires instead of suppress them. Okay, suppress is not a good method. Okay, likewise, in daily life and in the, uh, in the Chen Hall for intensive retreat, when we found out that we have strong desire that we cannot resist, the method we need to use uh, to condemn the desire is not suppress them. And, and we need to do, we need to release them. And the method is to contemplate the impurity of the body. And there are other methods that Buddha provide. And so from the Mahaprajna Paramita, uh, Padesa, uh, the question continue what to cultivate and what to follow in order, in order to achieve the first dhyana, okay? So dhyana paramita uh, for mundane levels has le eight levels. And for uh, super mundane levels, uh, there is one that transcends the eight uh, dhyana. So for the first very fundamental dhyana is the first one. If we can overcome uh, worldly desire um, here, um, and we can uh, transcend the desire realm and then go to the form realm. And as you know, we have three realms. The, what we are now is desire realm. The second level is the form realm and the, the, the third level, the highest level for, 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 um, for 
for sentient being are the um, is the um, the formless realm. Okay, so the first dhyana is once we transcend the desire realm, the first stage is called first dhyana, and so the question goes like this, and Buddha answer. Um, if we want to achieve the first dhyana, we have to follow the method of stillness, such as reflections on repulsiveness, just the contemplation of impurity of the body, and mindfulness of breathing, um, anap anapanasati, okay, so etc. And that those are what we call the five contemplation for stealing the mind. Okay, of course, there are some other translation. Basically, five methods Buddha provide uh, to help us overcome those uh, five desires and five hindrance. So contemplation of impurity of the body, we just talk about that. And, and in this talk, I will um, introduce the other four uh, with uh, the desire and the hindrance that we, we talk about. Okay, so um, uh, contemplation of impurity of the body is very powerful when we encounter um, uh, the sexual desires that we everybody have. Okay, so if we can transcend this sexual desire, that means you get to the level of ahashit. So. Um, we have to admit that we, we all have that. So uh, contemplation on the imp uh, of the impurity of the body is very important uh, because we eventually die, we eventually lose this body, no matter how beautiful your body, your body is, and it will become, you burn, you cremate your body, uh, become a bone and you become ashes. So nothing you can attach too much about it. Okay, and of course we can use contemplation of the four elements or uh, for Mahayana traditions, we use contemplation of the Buddha, okay. And, and the other way that um, Buddha taught us to overcome the desire is use the, what is called uh, through analysis of the emptiness, okay. so. We have, we have eyes, right? What we perceive, the form we perceive, uh, you say, oh, this, this iPhone, okay? So gradually the iPhone, you know, it has the share and it has the IC um, things inside, it has loop and you gradually uh, analyze, get into more detail and, and go into the detail until you cannot analyze it anymore. And it will be, it will become the so-called the so-called extreme extreme uh, 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 what is that called wei ji the extreme unit the the smallest units uh, that um, composed to be a form that we perceive. Okay, for example, um, eyes visual systems how we perceive home form is actually through light, okay? So a light is a, an electric magnetic radiation and propagate as a wave with a certain amplitude frequency and wavelength. So those decided how we perceive color, shape, size, and things moving and the brightness and, and reflection so that we can see the details of object and we can see things is far away or very close to us. So all those are the reflection, reflection of the light. So actually all those objects are the reflection of light, okay? So you see a beautiful woman or handsome man, they are the reflection of the light. Like, what, uh, like this, okay? Actually what we can see here, the vis visible light, wavelengths, the range is actually very small. And what we, the majority is what we cannot perceive. 
we cannot see. And what we can see is actually very limited. Okay, so when we go from very big wavelengths all the way to 10 uh, to, to minus 12 a nanometer, okay, or picometer, okay, then you, you can go to the atomic, atomic level, okay. So uh, the same thing for sound, okay, the ear, how can we perceive the sound is actually Again, oscillation of the mechanical wave. This is more bigger uh, wavelengths. And so it, it can be defined by frequency, decibel, you know, the sound power. And then we can hear soft sound, loud sound, pleasant sound, unpleasant sound, musical sound, audible sound, and audible sound. Okay, so all these are how we perceive, you know. so. Uh, vice versa, okay, for nose, how we smells, the order, the fragrance, fragrances, we, we can smell 10 types of odors, and those are different chemicals that make me, make us feel good, you know, fragrance, perfume, you know, flowers, or, you know, um, stinging tofu, uh, those things, and Tongue, you know, we can taste the sweet, salty, bitter, spicy, sour, etc. And those are also chemicals, the, 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 the molecules that um, interact with our tongues so that we can have the sweet sensation, okay? And body, another, another attachment is, you know, we like soft, we like warm, okay? Like leg pain is bad. How can we overcome it? We like soft, but we don't like pain, right? So here is the experiment. Actually, they, the tactile is also uh, electromagnetic uh, sensation, okay? So here is the experiment uh, that they can use a controller. You know, if you close your eye, you touch a box and, and people can use a controller to make you feel you know, what do you want to feel? Like, oh, the clothes, the smooth, the roughness. So actually, if we, our modern technology go more advanced, that we can use the AI to, to make us feel what we want, to make the world, world what we want to perceive. And is that real? Is that what we want? And what is the truth? What is the reality? Buddha always told that what we perceive now in this world is illusory. That doesn't mean that they don't exist. That means that this can be controlled, can be manipulated. It's not a permanent entity there. And so it's impermanence, it's changeable. Uh, actually, it's change they are changing all the time. So Buddha said that don't attach to that. And, and Buddhist, uh, like I say, the extreme smallest unit of matter that cannot be further divide, divided in, in Buddhist term, we call it pra, Pramanu, okay? Um, imperceptible atoms. So these, um, you know, if you are interested at in this, you can uh, uh, Google it, okay. But in the, the last line, the atoms are momentary and transient. Okay, even atom, the, the smallest units is momentary and transient. So how about the thing, the object that composed with the smallest unit? Of course, they are transient and momentary. So by this kind of analysis, um, Buddha taught us that, you know, when we um, encounter something that we really, really craving for, uh, especially from the five organs, we can use this method to um, detach. Uh, it doesn't mean that um, we, we don't eat good food, 
um, we don't get married or, you know, for lay people, or we don't wear good clothes, uh, we can still do that, but no attachment. That means when we don't have it, it's still okay. And when we have it, it's okay. Nothing special, okay? So use the ordinary mind to operate uh, our five organs when we contact with the five objects. That's the way uh, to prepare for practice. Okay. Now, the second, the, the third chapter, the, the second category is, of, is a five hindrance. Okay, eliminate uh, the hindrance um, is also important that we, we, we need to practice in our daily life. Although, although uh, the influence is, is more dramatic uh, in the retreat, because we have nothing to do, just practice. And so this being a hindrance become very obvious and it will occupy most of our time. And in our daily life, uh, because we are too busy, you know, we have too much things to do. So even though we want to, we are very sleepy, but we still, you know, get energized with coffee and, and do things, finish the job and get paid, right? And if we have some regret, and if our mind is very active, active on something, you know, you, you like to uh, use the social media, you see a lot of things, you know, you cannot detach to, even though you lied on the bed, still see looking at your iPhone and serving some, something, you know, from your social groups, it's attachment. But at some point, you still need to let go because you, tomorrow you still need to go to work. You have to make money, right? So um, we have five hindrances in our daily life. Um, if we can practice to master our mind to overcome these five hindrances, and in the retreat, when this happened to us again, then we know how to handle, how to deal with it. And uh, if we learn how to deal with it just in the Chan Hall, then, then basically we will waste most of our time in the retreat. Okay, that's, that's, that's pity for, that's pity. And, and so um, the first one is called greed. Um, and this, the opposite is hatred, okay? And of course this greed, uh, related to the previous five desires as well. Um, so I will talk about greed and hatred together. Okay, here is Maslow's um, model, the, the, the model of our needs, okay. And um, the bottom line, the bottom level is our psychological needs. We need food, we need water, we need warmth, and we need to sleep, we need to sleep. Um, that's a basic uh, needs. Everyone need to fulfill, otherwise we will die. So this is a life and death thre threat here. So if we are in the hunger, uh, in dr drowness, um, if the, um, the country or area have the, the hunger uh, or the, the drowness, um, then people died of hunger and, um, or died of drowness because no water. So these are fundamental needs we need to have. But the problem is nowadays, the majority of the people has the problem of obedience. We have too much, too much. So needs go to wants, go to greed. So we need this much, but we want this much, okay? So we have plenty of food. So I want to have better food, more delicious food. You know, the clothes 
uh, I, I want to have thong uh, jacket. I want to have like a, you know, coat, like a thousand dollars coat, um, you know, good brand, you know, famous brand. Um, then that become wants. You want more than you need. And then out about greed. Now we are talking about craving, greedy here is the thing we need to overcome is, greed means I want this. I want this. I want this eagerly. I cannot live without this. And we spend most of our time and energy pursuing this. That's why Steve Job, you know, we talked about that last week. Steve Job just picked Black Turtle and James for his clothes. He doesn't want to, he didn't want to spend time and energy on how to, you know, how to dress, how to match the clothes. He wanted to focus more on the top, self-actualization, okay? So if people spend a, a, more, a lot of time trying to, you know, I'm rich, I'm rich people. I need to let people know that I'm rich. So I have to buy a handbag that is only like five, only five in this world. So I spend energy and time try to find, locate where I can buy this kind of unique handbag. Okay, that happened a lot right now. And I need to, you know, get a very famous unique dress. I don't want other people dress like me, okay, because I'm unique. So eventually we spend a lot of time, money and energy. And if I cannot get it, then I, I use illegal way or I use some tricky way to get it. But that's even worse, okay? And how about oh, self safety, the same thing? How about belongings and love? Yeah, just like things we want to own. How about love? You know, people always complain. When my husband, you know, dating with me, he treated me so well. He bought me candy, roses. Uh, he remembered my birthday. He re even remembered my mother's birthday and giving us gift. But once we get married, things change. Um, he he seems forget everything, and he ignore me. Uh, he he doesn't love me anymore. Because the definition of love is you have to spend most of your time and money on me. Okay, <laughs> so the love we craving for love. We want to occupy, we want to possess someone's love, I mean, possess someone's uh, 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 time and, and energy and attention. That's too, too much. The people end up divorced because the husband thinks that, you know, I get married now. now. Now the wife can take care of the family. I want to spend focus on my career, making more money and provide better life for my wife and my children. But then the wife wants something else. So the conflict uh, end up divorce. Okay. So needs, wants, and greed, even for love or friendship, the same thing. And, and, and esteem, okay, now it's a problem. We want social justice. And we, we want the uh, equal treatment for different races, uh, for different color of people. Okay. We, we, we are born to be equal, right? But the problem is it seems not in a society, you know. Um, you know, the, the rich people look down the poor people. You know, they treat poor people not equally. And, and you know, and, and, and the white and yellow and, and black people and, and all kinds of things, um, the, the so-called justice um, come from 
our eager, our dignity to be treated equally. And, and this, is, this is normal and this is, is, it is this right that we have to treat people equally. And the problem is even Chinese did not treat Chinese equally because we have rich people and poor people. Even rich people did not treat each other equally because billionaires treat millionaires. Billionaires on uh, millionaire are not at are not at the level of billionaire. So different uh, uh, levels have their own group. So it seems like um, grouping, you know, grouping, and try to be higher than others are our fundamental problem here. So that's why we, we have craving and we all have hatches because once this, our needs and wants and greeds are not fulfilled and then it become unsatisfied, dislike and eventually become hatred. So now what to do, how to handle it? If we spend our whole life just pursuing out, outside without for people, you need to treat me equally. You need to give me justice. You need to do this, you need to do that. And, and life is short. And we, we will not satisfy. That's why Buddha says suffering, suffering, means unsatisfied, unsatisfied with everything that we perceive. Then we have suffering and we need to know the causes of suffering. So here, Buddha say, you know, if we found out that we want more, if we found out that we are greeting for something badly, contemplate the impurity of the body and contemplate the causes and conditions. And we all know about karma, right? I want to be respected by others. But why people treat me so bad? Why people mistreat me? Why people look down at me? There is causes and conditions. If you try everything, people still treat you like this. And that's their problem. Because in their mind, it's not harmony. Their mind is not in harmony. Their mind is not in equanimity. And our lesson, our own lesson is when the things happen around us does not match what we expected, what should we do to keep a harmony, harmonious mind? And on top of that, we start mind to treat people equally no matter how you treat me. And our practice advance, advance and get close to Diana. okay? So that's a scenario for us to practice. That's Buddha taught us, contemplation, contemplate on the causes and conditions, okay? The other side, when things did not happen the way we want it to be, especially when we encounter the person, then we have to contemplate the compassion, the loving kindness. Just like I said, use this scenario as an object for us to contemplate compassion. Compassion, com compassionate with that person, that person is in that situation. And then contemplate on our own mind, that I have to initiate compassion to treat myself, my body and mind with compassion so that I, kept, I have the mind with equanimity and also the causes and conditions. So overall, what, what happened to us has its reason by causes and conditions and consequence. And what we can do is to use um, the wisdom from 
contemplation of the impurity of the body and the wisdom from contemplate um, the loving, loving kindness, use the wisdom to transform, transform the conditions and transform the karma. Say so that's the um, Buddha say that how we deal the five the first two five hindrance. So when it happened to in the retreat, you know nobody treat you bad. Everybody is silence here. You know everybody is following the schedule, following the rules here. But we still generate craving. You know once the one of the monastic share that once in the retreat there are one day one whole day the craving for milk come up up occupy his mind for one day i want milk 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 and then he suddenly feel like i never i never craving for milk in my daily life why in the retreat i'm cra i'm craving so for milk and it, i waste one whole day just dealing with the craving for milk okay so he, here the impurity milk why i you know if you have if you are high level uh, practitioner you just cut off this thought immediately but if not some people like you know if, if they are artists what the music come out he even want to have a pen to write the, the melody or they are a, a writer a good story come out you want to write it down and cannot stop it and at this point you know it's just like trap you you know absorb you so much so then we have to use the the contemplation of impurity or the contemplation of causes and condition or a contemplation of you know five elements four elements and that we will talk about later so or your mind in the retreat will come up some some people you hate or maybe when you in a childhood that you never remember that you are abused by someone but through the meditation through the practice when your mind go to subtler and deeper some of the memory buried a long time ago will come out and since we our mind is quiet and subtle the craving and the hatred sensation will become stronger that's happened the same thing when we are dying when we are dying we not, when we are losing the boundary of the body our sixth consciousness become very sensitive and very powerful. At this moment, if we generate greeting, you are not letting go of your family or a possession or money, you will be trapped and, and this karma will bring you to the lower realm. If you generate hatred, because some people you hate show up before you're that bad, the hatred will 10 times more and that hatred of the karma of hatred will lead you to ashura okay so as a practitioner especially during retreat when the craving and hatred hatred arise we need we need to know how to handle it and that help when we are facing the dying, dying issue as well okay now so i talk about the contemplation of loving kindness and compassion as well as contemplation of causes and conditions and next same problem big problem you know in a retreat especially people dozing you know drowsiness for sleep all the time Okay, especially for the first couple of days. Um, that's called sloth and tor torpor. It means dullness, the mind is dual, and lack of energy, lack of motivation. I try to find a wave pattern 
it's like you know the, your mind is like ah oh, you know very no energy and no pattern and then it's is it gray it's not bright your mind is not clear so it's like, and if you lose your attention, then you fall asleep, okay? And how about the other one? It's called the opposite, restless and regret, okay? So it's like this, your mind. The ocean waves up and down and different color, you know, it's, it's the, the up and down of your minds. Um, there's many things, and come together at the same time. You talk, you're thinking about you know, uh, uh, you know. I I I leave home for seven days. Will my children eat uh, on time? Uh, you know, he should go to school right now. Maybe he sleep you know over time. And he, you know, my husband. You know, my work. My colleague. Did he cover my job? Everything come up and down, up and down. And then, or something you find out, oh no, I shouldn't, I shouldn't worry about this. You know, I, 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 I waste one period, one session. You start to regret, I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that. Another session waste as well. So once we have this kind of, of situation happens and, and that means our mind is unable to come to remain calm, uh, let alone using the method. And then we cannot be mindful of Nama and Rupa, means the name and form, means our mind, body, and mind. Okay. So oftentimes, for example, we, we are following the breath, uh, counting the breath, but we need to use this body or we contemplate the whole body. We need to be mindful with our body or our breathing when we have restlessness and regret, it's impossible. We just follow our thought and forget about the, the sensation of the body or sensation of the breathing. And let alone be mindful of, about our mind, okay? And eventually, for all the practice, we are training our mind, not training our body, okay? So eventually, the, the object for our contemplation is the mind, okay? So when, when we, our body and mind cannot come to a certain levels, we cannot see where our mind is. So can I use the method? So um, the, the topa, the, the, the uh, laziness, the, you know, the sh no energy and this restless, even though it's two opposite, but they have the same problem, is our mind cannot focus on our mind and body, and we cannot use method, okay? So that we need to overcome. And usually counting the breath is actually the method to overcome this. So in the retreat, usually, Shifu will say, you know, relax and observe your breathing. More focus. You can either focus on the sensation, just focus. If you cannot focus on your, your whole body because you, your mind is too loose or too, too energized on something else, you ha we have to focus on the number itself or the sensation of the nostril area. Focus on very sh one thing, very uh, clear object and mind to focus, collect our mind, keep doing that. And also in our daily life, the same thing, we can still observe our own breathing. You know, just like during the work, take five minutes break, sitting there, relax your whole body, observe your breathing and count the breath for five minutes. Immediately, the mind will come and focus. And then you go to work. And here again, if we are using Hua to and silent illumination, but when we, our mind is in the, in the lazy, lazy stage, state, uh, 
or in a very restless stage, then usually Sufu will say, okay, let go of your bato or sudden elimination, come back to following counting the breath. Until you count the breaths, until we can stabilize our mind, then we pick up huato or sad illumination. Okay, uh, that's the me method that um, the Buddha and also our Sifu introduce. And of course, we can use contemplation of the four elements or in the Mahayana tradition, we'd like to introduce the contemplation of the Buddha. We can chant Buddha's name or prostrate to the Buddha. So um, it happened to me once in a while. Uh, I, I remember when I was a lay people. Actually, I, come to, I came to retreat in the first two days. I just sleep as long as I want. I want it. But when, once when I sit on the cushion, I just fall asleep. And for two days, I go to interview with Sifu. Sifu say, prostrate, go prostrate. Because this hindrance become an obstacle, you know, cover a shield. You know, these five hindrances become a shield that cover, um, cover me uh, and prevent me to use my wato. Okay, so at that time, Sufu say, go prostrate for a session. And after that, then I'm, I'm okay to continue my method. So, um, um, prostrate to the Buddha or, or you know, chant Buddha's name for a short period of time, just like counting the breath to calm our mind as an expedient method. And then remove the hindrance, remove the shield, and then we continue to use our, um, the, the, the main method, All right? Meditation. Okay, now it's a very popular topic called brain synchronization, okay? And that scientists found out that through meditation, our brain, as you know, our brain, if I remember correctly, have five or six regions that take care of different uh, signals. And if we meditate, all this region will synchronize. And then on top of that, if your mind power, you, if your mind is very stable, then you have the power to synchronize other people. In other words, in this chant hall, if uh, half, like 40 people out of 80 are very stable, the mind power, the mind, the brain can synchronize the other 40 people to come down. On the other hand, if 60 out of 80 are in the restless or drowsiness stage, then also the brain, the, the message from the brain will influence other people. And that's a very interesting study, okay, right now for meditation and use a scientific way to study the brain, you know, the, 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 the the, the magnet radio electromagnetic wave that emitted from our brain. And, but it, no matter what, the method is trying to help us, you know, all the wave uh, become like synchronized, very consistent and stable. And eventually all the waves become one wave, that unified mind, one wave. And one wave become the object for us to contemplate. And if we, if we have the uh, good karmic roots, this one wave will become no wave. That means you see the emptiness, but that doesn't mean the wave does not exist, okay? That's an analogy because single wave, you can contemplate on that in order to see that even the wave is empty. All right, almost finished. The fifth hindrance is called doubt. Lack of trust, lack of confidence. So there are three types. Is you doubt about yourself. We doubt about the teachers. We doubt about the Dharma or the method of practice taught by the teachers. Um, so basically this doubt 
come from the arrogance. And um, Buddhist term is called mana. And this mana come from um, Sakya, Sakya, uh, Sakya uh, view. Okay, maybe it's been Sakya Yejin. Okay, Sakya. So we all have the self views. And that's, and once we have the self views, then we, we have a mana, the arrogance. The arrogance, including that we think we are higher, equal, or worse than other people. These are all arrogance. So when we think that we are worse than other people, we less we um, we have a lack of self confidence. You know, the people sitting in front of me, she sit for two hours with lotus for a lotus posture. I want to be just like that. That means, you know, I practice well. We ignore our strengths and weakness and just try to do what people can do in order to prove myself that I'm as good as he, him or her. So that's lack of self-confidence. What's wrong with following the session? What's wrong with the half lotus? What's wrong with the loose lotus? You know, even I sit on a chair, that's me. I'm practicing the method, okay? And the teacher, you know, I have practiced with teach, this teacher for 20 years. I, I did not even achieve the first dhyana. This teacher must have problem. Or the third, I think Huato is not suitable for me. Maybe I should change to silent elimination. Maybe silent elimination, Mahayana is not good for me. I should go to Theravada or Tibetan, you know, and then so you change all the time and you lack of self-confidence uh, and you, you, you doubt about the teacher and you're fooling around for, for our whole life and nothing get done. Okay, that's a big hidden hindrance. No matter which tradition you follow, no matter which teacher you follow, no matter which uh, method you use, if you know, if you have this kind of five hindrance, we cannot get out of this hindrance. And we cannot even talk about that we are practicing at all, okay? So today I spent quite some time explain um, what has been taught in the uh, essentials for uh, practice coming and insight, uh, in the basic principle of Samatha Vipassana. Uh, because these are the major problem in our daily life that we got to practice uh, day by day, and as well as in the retreat. But if we can handle these 10 items well in the daily life, then we will spend very short time to take care of these problems in the retreat and focus more time and energy on our main practice. So next time, next week, oh, uh, we are not get to the main math practice yet. Once we have this problem solved, then we still need to know what to adjust balance and what is the expedient means when, that we need to equip um, in order to get to the practice. Um, so next week, I will talk about ch chapter four and five about how to adjust uh, five balance and how to use five expedient means. Okay, thank you for your attention.